The Reproductive Health Act. Victory for women's rights? Or national tragedy. Let's talk about it. Okay, so while we were out of town on NAM, um, there was a bill that was signed into law by Mr. Cuomo in New York City, which had a bunch of people clapping mm. and a bunch of other people infuriated. And as I've been watching conversations about this bill, there's been a lot of misinformation and disinformation, mm -hmm. partly because of the way that the bill is... is um, letter, but also partly because of folks' you know, ignorance as to what the law was mm -hmm. prior to the bill. Yep. So I'm just going to cut right to the chase and actually go to the pertinent part of the bill because you know I hear a lot of people that have um, ideas about the bill or, or thoughts about the bill, but don't really understand um, what the bill actually says. Mm -hmm. And so... We're going to look at the the bill. So here's the actual language of the uh, the law. Uh, it's under section section 2599 BB. It's entitled abortion. It says a healthcare practitioner licensed, certified, or authorized under Title Eight of the Education Law, acting within his or her lawful scope of practice, may perform an abortion when, according to the practitioner's reasonable and good faith professional judgment. Based on the facts of the patient's case, the patient is within 24 weeks from the commencement of pregnancy, or there is an absence of fetal viability, or the abortion is necessary to protect the patient's life or health. That's the language, because previous to this, uh, you could have your abortion up to the 24th week. Mm -hmm. So this extends abortion past week 24, in the cases of um, infant fetal viability, meaning uh, the doctor determines that the, the, the fetus is not going to live outside of the womb, mm -hmm. um, or the life of the mother, or the health of the mother. Yep. Uh, previous to this, if you were outside of the 24-week window and a doctor determined if, that the child was not viable, you could not have an abortion in the state of New York. Mm -hmm. So if the doctor does the ultrasound and says, the child isn't viable, it's not going to live outside the womb, then um, if you were within the 24-week window, the, the, the woman could choose to have the abortion. If it was outside the 24-week window, then um, she'd have to carry it full term or take a trip to Colorado or oh. California. Okay. Okay? So that's, that's new. Um... Now, here's a couple things that I keep hearing, um, and, and we're doing this as a public service so that folks are not um, ignorant. A lot of people believe that this statute is only to protect the life of the mother. I mean, that's a vast... Yeah, that's what I've been hearing people say. The vast majority of people really believe that prior to the inception of this bill, that <coughs> if the child threatened the life of the mother, that, um, you know, it was like, sorry, lady... Mm -hmm. um, here is uh, law.northwestern.edu it's, it's an actual um, law school and I, I want to show you guys something because it's actually very interesting <clears throat> in 1827 <clears throat> and now the, all, all the links middle America style, style are going to be in the, in the description in 1827 Illinois made any attempt to use a noxious substance with intent to induce abortion a crime punishable by up to three years and in 1867 amended the statute to include any attempt regardless of the means used and declared such an attempt to be murder if it resulted in the death of the woman this amended statute exempted abortion and attempted abortion if done for bona fide medical and surgical purposes one year later, New York made any attempt to abort a quick child, quick means living here, second degree manslaughter if the intent was to destroy the child, or a misdemeanor if the intent was only to produce a miscarriage, not defined at any age of the pregnancy. Watch this. The attempt to abort a quick child was excused if it was necessary to preserve the life of the mother. What this means is that in New York City, since, 18, since 1845, abortions for the life of the mother 
We're already codified law. Yep. So we didn't need this law for that. Right. That's not why the the um, the leftists were celebrating this. They were celebrating this because it, it was something more than just the life of the mother. I, I think mm. we've got to be extremely um, careful here about how we report the news. We've got to be honest. Yeah. The RHA is not being celebrated because it now protects the life of the mother. If that was the issue, there would be no necessity for it because in New York City since 1845, this was this was on the books. Right. If you want to look, it's statute uh, part four, chapter one, title two, sections eight or nine. So, sorry, sections, pages eight and nine. So there's the actual statute. So if you're talking about life of the mother, that was already on the mm -hmm. books. Okay, well then what in the world is a controversy? Yeah. <clears throat> What's everybody cheering about? Well, it's very simple. The, the controversy has to do with the fact that they use the term life or health. Mm -hmm. And they don't put any adjectives before the term health, which is very important. Why is that important? Well, here's why it's important, ladies and gentlemen. Because the term health can mean a bunch of different things, and if you don't define it, then it's an extremely broad term. Now, we know definitively that according to the law, health cannot mean life of the mother. Well, that's what it, That's what they make it sound like, though. That's what most people think. Right, and th that's why I question whether they've actually read it, because I'll read it again. Mm -hmm. It says, um, 24 weeks in the commencement, commencement of pregnancy, or... There is an absence of fetal viability, that's one category, or the abortion is necessary to protect the patient's life, that's another category, or health. Mm -hmm. So clearly in this law, there are two separate things. The patient's life and the patient's health are not the same thing. Yeah. They mm -hmm. are a separate category. That's what all those ors are there for. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. So we know that health does not mean life of the mother. We know that. We know that for yeah. for the, the immediate context of the passage where or is continuously used. Mm -hmm. We also know it as uh, New York already had a standing legal president to protect the life of the mother. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what's new? What's new is this term health. The term health, as we've already stated, is an extremely vacuous, vague, broad term. Mm -hmm. And so... Usually what happens is these, these um, acts are drafted by attorneys, and um, we've, we've been hanging out with some attorneys, so we know that they're very purposeful in the words they say, yep. and the words that they do not say. Right. Well, maybe we can find something that kind of gives us some clarity on why the term health is important. Oh, what do we have? Doe versus Bolton, 1973. This is a very important case. This case came out pro, uh, r right after Roe v. Wade. Okay. And what was happening is there is this um, young lady who went all the way to the Supreme Court. Her last name, her last name wasn't Doe, but you know Jane Doe. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is in the state of Georgia in the seventies, what what you had to do was if you wanted an abortion, you had to apply to your physician. Mm -hmm. Then your physician had to submit your request for abortion to a board. And then the board would decide whether or not you were able to get an abortion. Huh. And so what ended up happening was she was suing because she made the claim that it chilled her right to an abortion. Having to go through all of those. Right, right. Yeah. So on there it is on March uh, 25th, 1970. Here's the actual Supreme Court ruling. She applied to the abortion C committee of Grady Memorial Hospital Atlanta for a therapeutic abortion under 261202, which is the, the statute in their, in their mm -hmm. state. Her application was denied 16 days later on April 10, and she was um, eight weeks pregnant on the ground of her situation was not described in 261202 because she was not the victim of rape, um, and it was not... It was not her health. Her life was not her health. Wasn't at risk. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so, in the Supreme Court decision, she's a 22-year-old Georgia citizen, married, nine weeks pregnant. She had three living children before. 
She, her husband had recently abandoned her and she was forced to live with her indigent parents and their eight children. Whoa. Okay. So <clears throat> she had been a mental patient at the state hospital. She had been advised that an abortion could be performed on her with less danger to her health than if she gave birth to the child she was carrying. She would be unable to care for or support the new child. And so what happened is that the, the board denied it because that's a, that was what was called the therapeutic mm -hmm. abortion because it wasn't her life and she was not um, she, she was not raped, right? right. Um, statutory or, or, or otherwise. And so this is going back and forth in the Supreme Court. And one of the things that the, um, the pro-life side was arguing was that the term medically necessary is vague. It is, yeah. Right? And so listen to what the Supreme Court said. The vagueness argument is set at rest by the decision in the United States versus Vudic, 402 U.S. 62 71 71, dated 1971 where the issue is raised with respect to District of Columbia statute making abortions criminal unless the same were done as necessary for the per preservation of the mother's life or health and under the direction of a competent licensed practitioner of medicine. That statute has been construed to bear, bear upon psychological as well as physical well-being. <clears throat> this being so, the court concluded that the term health presented no problem to vagueness. So what they're saying is medically necessary is not vague at all because necessary has to do with the person's health. If the person's health is at risk, then abortion oh, okay. would then become medically necessary. So the Supreme Court is saying, what are you talking about vague? It's very, very specific. Mm -hmm. It's health. We agree with the district court that the medical judgment may be exercised in the light of all factors. Physical, emotional, psychological, familial, and the woman's age relevant to the well-being of the patient. All of these factors may relate to health. So the Supreme Court in Doe versus Bolton in 1973 codified health as physical, psychological, emotional, and familial. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you go back to the law, and like I said, we talk to these, we talk to attorneys. Yeah. And they're always going back to previous case mm -hmm. law. Yep. Um, so it's not like we could say, well, Doe v. Bolton is outdated. Doe v. Bolton came out after Roe v. Wade. And people to this day are still invoking Roe v. Wade. So in this document, they are talking about the... Um, the term health and the term health in the context of abortion is not limited to a life threatening situation. Right. right. As we already saw in the document, that mm -hmm. can't be what the RHA is about. It can't be limited to a life threatening situation. It doesn't even have to be a physical malady. <laughs> listen to what l l listen to what the Supreme Court um decision goes on to say. For example, rejecting applicants under the Georgia statute are required to endure the discomforts of pregnancy, to incur the pain, higher mortality rate, and after effects of childbirths, to abandon educational plans, to sustain loss of income, to forego the satisfactions of careers, to tax further mental and physical health in providing childcare, and in some cases to bear the lifelong stigma of unwed motherhood, a badge which may haunt, if not deter later, legitimate family relationships. Wow. So, um, again, well, this that is, really opened it up. This is all again. This is in the context of health. This is all in context of mental health. Wow. Okay. So we already have a precedent at the Supreme Court level. This is on the federal level of what the term health means mm -hmm. in the context of abortion. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be honest here. Health includes mental health. It also includes your family situation. Mm -hmm. All of those are pertinent. And, and monetary stuff because it's just to sustain loss of income. Right. All of these are, are fall under the rubric of what it means for mental health. So let's just be honest here. When it talks about the life or health of the mother, 
What we're saying is, if you can convince a doctor that you have a history of postpartum, is that not a mental health issue? Oh, it absolutely is. If your economic status changes drastically, let's say you were married and then your husband decides around month eight that he wants to divorce you, that significantly damages you economically mm -hmm. and psychologically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> the RHA leaves all of that wide open. So we can actually abort a child up to the day before it's born, according to the RHA. For those reasons. <laughs> under the guise of health. Under the guise that's of That's crazy. Under the guise of health. That's mm -hmm. the, that's that's already codified law. So let's just review this. <laughs> In the eighteen hundreds, as far back as the eighteen hundreds, it was already codified law in New York City that you could have an abortion for the life of the mother. Mm -hmm. That was already codified law. That's not new. The term health is new. Saying that you could have a have an abortion due to your health, which leaves open physical mm -hmm. as well as mental health, is new. Okay, so let so that that's what's going on in, in, in New York City. That's what's that's what's happening in New York City. Is life or health. Now now this is very interesting because what we're about to see is uh, a Miss Tran. And Miss Tran has has drafted a bill very, very similar to what we just saw in New York City, and she's doing it in Virginia, and there's a back and forth questioning happening, and l l let's observe this, this back and forth. How late in the third trimester would you be able to, to do that? You know, I, it's very unfortunate that our, the, our physicians, uh, our witnesses, were not able to attend today to speak specifically. No, no I'm talking that. about your bill. How, yeah, how, late, I mean, how late in the third trimester could a, a physician perform an abortion if he indicated it would impair the mental health of the of the woman? Or physical health. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm um, talking about the mental health. So you notice, everybody knows the history of the term health. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't deny that an abortion can happen in the third trimester for mental health, mm -hmm. but she quickly adds physical in right. there. Because the general public only right. thinks that the abortions are there for physical life of the mother in, yeah. in third trimester. Yep. So she wants that on the record. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so she wants that on the record. But he says, yeah, but I'm talking about the mental health. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't say, wait, we're not, we're not killing kids for mental health. We're not doing that. It's not what she says. Listen to what she says. So, I mean, through the third trimester. The third trimester goes all the way up to 40 weeks. Okay, but to the end of the third trimester. Yep, I don't think we have a limit in the bill. So, um, where it's obvious that a woman is about to give birth, she has physical signs of, of, that she is about to give a birth, would that still be a point at which she could request an abortion if she was so certified? She's dilating. See that look? Yeah. <clears throat> so this this guy is asking. Yeah. Water's broke, dilating. Right. Can you still request an abortion at that request point? Request to kill this child, have yeah. this abortion, and she flinches. Yeah. Because she knows what she's about to say is going on public record. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that would be a you know a decision that the doctor, the physician, and the woman. I would understand make that. At that. I'm asking point. if your bill allows that. My bill would allow that. Yes. Now again, he didn't mention life of the mother. He mentioned mental health. Gosh. And the ch the woman is dilating, and she's saying there are no limits. It would allow for that, and she's flinching because she understands that this is being recorded and it's on tape. Okay, so, he, so, so there's Ms. Tran. And um, so then the governor, uh, his, his name is Governor Northam. The governor is on a radio show and the, the host asks him about this inter, interaction. Mm -hmm. Listen to what he says. And she was pressed by a Republican delegate about whether her bill would permit an abortion, even as a woman is essentially dilating, ready to give birth. And she answered, 
that it would permit an abortion at that stage of labor. Do you support her measure and, and explain her answer? So in this particular example, uh, if a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen. Um, the infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. So, so I think this was really blown out of proportion. What is this discussion? Well, exactly. What is there to discuss? So people have been going crazy on this guy because people are saying, you're talking about killing this kid after it's born. Yeah. That's, oh, my word. That's what the... What the heck? Well, what is the difference? If you no, can, I if understand. you can stab it's, a kid in the back... Why are people not seeing this has gone way oh, too far? Oh, people, people... Well, I, I, I think... I think these folks have overplayed their hands. Well, I certainly hope so. Because what is, and that's the reason why they put all that other language in the in the act, Gosh. as if this is the first time that a woman's life has ever been in um, consideration. When we know from the 1800s that wasn't the case. Um, it's literally insane. What does he mean? Well, look, I when we shot our first Planned Parenthood video, I talked about the Katrina Effort case where she strangled her newborn and threw him over the mm -hmm. fence. Yeah. I talked about Francesca Minerva's um, article, Post-Birth Abortion, Why Should the Baby Live? And people were accusing me of slippery slopeism. Yeah, a bunch of times. Now I, ended, now I look like a prophet, because I said this was coming. Well, look, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need supernatural insight to understand that this was coming. Because everybody in the medical field knows that if you can butcher a child at 24 weeks, by the way, this is what a kid looks like at 24. So this, this is the other thing. In New York City, you could do this to a 24-year-old kid, 24-month-old-week-old kid. Sorry, let's be accurate. <laughs> so abortion at 24 weeks is absolutely nightmaric, night, nightmarish. Ugh. So there were, there were no logical you know, backstops to prevent this from being an eventuality. Yeah. And th this is obviously what this is. Now, there's a lot of people going, wait, whoa, 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 wait a second here. And all the Planned Parenthood apologists, of course, are saying, no, 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 life of the mother, life of the mother, life of the mother. Okay, we just saw Miss Tran, who is advocating for the bill, she admitted that she's talking about killing a kid up to before it's born, and not for the only for the life of the mother. So the people that draft this stuff and actually do these procedures know what's happening. Yep. yep. It's just the silly. It's the it's it's the folks. They're assuming that we're not going to read the bill. They're assuming we're not going to do the research. Yep. They're assuming that they're the only ones that know about. <laughs> uh, they're assuming they're the only ones that know about Doe v. Bolton. Mm -hmm. You're not. It's open source. Everybody can read it. Mm -hmm. Look, guys, here's what we have. Life of the mother. Terrible situation. Definitely a horrible situation. Fetal viability. Terrible situation to be in. Mm -hmm. But that is not the only thing that this law addresses. Now, one of the one of the principles that um, that you have to think about in any situation is follow the money, mm -hmm. right? Follow the money. So here here we are at um, RockvilleWomenCenter.com, and at Rockville Women's Center, um, they will help you get abortion, but they've got a fact sheet. Mm -hmm. So. Go ahead and read. We're going to send a screen. We're going to take a screenshot of this. But go ahead and read. The specific cost of an abortion depends on the type of procedure and how far along you are in the pregnancy. The price rises as pregnancy progresses. Price also varies by provider, clinics, and private practice abortionists typically offer lower costs than hospitals. Typical cost of abortion. 
medical abortion abortion pill within 10 weeks gestation is between $350 and $650. Suction aspiration vacuum abortion, which is between 6 to 12 weeks gestation, is between $600 and $1,000. Dilation and, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Curatage, a D and C. Okay, it's between 13 and 16 weeks gestation, and that's $850 to $1,600. Dilation and evacuation, which is between 17 and 21 weeks gestation, is between $1,500 and $2,100. Well, so as you can see, the later the, the, the abortion is, yeah. The more expensive mm -hmm. or lucrative it is, depending on who you are. If the, and now they're saying that you know they can have abortions right up until the day of, so those numbers are going to skyrocket, getting closer and closer to delivery. Right, right. So there you are. Um, so it becomes a lot more lucrative for the abortion provider the later the uh, in the trimester. Mm -hmm. You know what's interesting? The, they don't have a list of like what the abortion cost is in the third trimester. So here I am at prospect.org and um, here's what it says. The expense of a third trimester abortion, which often costs more than $10,000. Whoa! It's more of a deterrent. Some women will be able to afford the procedure, but they'll lose everything they have in order to do it. And, and the article goes on. Uh, we will post that at theprospect.org. Um, this was written in 2013. It was the last of late-term abortion providers, and it was talking about um, these heroic doctors who will do very late-term abortions and um, the, the, the plight of these women trying to get late-term abortions cost $10,000. So, um, if you believe... if you like hire a hitman. So, if you believe that these doctors and physicians don't have a financial stake in these uh, decisions, you're wrong. They do. Okay, well, so, so, so this is what we have. This is this is where we are in America. We're actually taught we have an actual governor who came out and articulated that a conversation would happen. The child would be kept comfortable, but a conversation would happen about what to do with said child. Did you notice he also said, you know, we may resuscitate the child if that's what the woman wants. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? The entire argument before was it's her body. Wasn't that the argument? It's, it's not her body. Was, it's, yeah. it's outside of the it's outside of the womb. But now the mother still gets to decide whether or not to resuscitate the yeah, child. Yeah, but that's because they put in that health part. Right. So now, even when the baby's outside of her, it's still affecting her mental health. Right. Right. Totally. Oh my. Right. Gosh. Now. Um, I just don't know if you if you don't stop it then now now the baby's outside of her womb now what I mean because like Lord knows kids will cause you some duress at every sure. age of their existence sure well they, they cause more duress as they age yeah <laughs> not less right they don't get less stressful as kids age right okay so in this same uh, here's Miss Tran and um, and no, no, let's watch as this continues. What type of mental health conditions would you anticipate would be um, utilized by physicians under these circumstances to determine that a, a child that is otherwise viable is worthy of an abortion? You know, I, I mean, again, I'm not a physician, so I can't make those calls as to when a physician would determine that uh, a woman's mental health is would you know would where they would be able to certify an abortion at that point but the doctor the physician wouldn't have any have to have to have any special specialized training in mental health to make that determination under your bill right under this bill no okay okay so so then this guy is staying on the mental health kick because mm -hmm. he, he he's very smart he wants this on record yeah 
because he, he just saw what happened with the New York bill where they were able to successfully propagandize people into believing that this was only about a physical right. malady. Right. So she says, well, I don't know what that would be. I don't know what mental health uh, issues would, would constitute an abortion mm -hmm. to a physician. Mm -hmm. Then he says, well, he wouldn't have to be certified in mental health. What does he? Answer, no. Uh, just because you're a doctor doesn't mean that you, you're you the be-all, end-all in mental no. health. I mean, mm -hmm. good, good night. Because people say things like, oh, scientists say X, Y. Well, which scientists? Right. Astrophysicists? Right. Oceanographers? Right. Alec, who, 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 that's a broad discipline. So yeah. he's saying, okay, well, if this physician gets to make this life and death decision, does he have to be particularly qualified as a mental health expert? Answer, no, he doesn't. Nope. So then on what basis can he make said life and death decision? Jesus. I don't know, 10,000, he might have 10,000 reasons. Right. For right. all... <coughs> All right, thank you. Delegate Tran, what, what are some of the conditions that um, a woman could be experiencing in a third trimester late term pregnancy uh, for which abortion and not delivery would be the optimal um, result to protect either her life or health or that of the, the child, if that's even an, an interest? But what, what would be the, what, is there any Okay, so what he's saying is, kid's nine months old, just deliver him. Mm -hmm. Just deliver the kid and give him up for adoption. Mm -hmm. Why do we need to kill this kid? Right. I mean, have you ever thought about that? Kids seven, eight, nine months old, just do a C-section, take the kid out. Mm -hmm. Or deliver him early. Right. Why do we need to kill him? So now, he's gone from the mental health aspect to, okay, let's say physically speaking, what in the world... <laughs> what type of procedure would be necessary to kill a nine-month-old child? Right. Instead of just delivering him. Right. Listen. Commonly accepted medical decision to terminate the pregnancy in the late term, rather than deliver the, the child if the mother's health or um, life is actually in danger. Um, you know, Mr. Chairman, I am aware that there are certain medical conditions where that might be an option for. Um, the mother, and I would actually turn over to Galena from Nayral to, to see if she has those specific uh, medical examples. Okay. Thank you. So, hi. I'm really short. That's okay. Um, I don't have a lot of specific examples because I'm not a, I'm not a physician. Um, I'm an attorney, so, um, and we unfortunately do not have the, phys the physicians could not be here today because they are seeing patients at the moment. So I'm an attorney, all the physicians, all of them, they just couldn't make it to the hearing. Do you believe that? Or is it you don't want physicians on record saying, yeah. there's no real reason to kill a kid at yeah. nine months? Yeah. You're not going to save anybody's life by killing a kid at nine months in his mother's womb. So she she prefaces the whole thing by saying, "Hey, look, I'm just I'm just an attorney. I don't know." And yeah. all the all the other physicians they're seeing patients. Yeah. <laughs> she said that with a smile on her face. I know that there are certain central nervous system anomalies that cannot be determined until later stages in the pregnancy. I also know that certain anomalies like the absence of um, certain organs. Okay, and, but, or, so you're um, talking about the child. Let me just leave that out of the equation then. Sure. In terms of the health or yeah. life of the mother, what... But I, I do want to point out that, you know, you usually do screening for Down syndrome in the amnio around mm -hmm. 19 to 20 weeks. Mm -hmm. So you're doing an amniocentesis because you want to find out whether or not the kid's got... Um, Mm -hmm. uh, the, the likelihood of, of being being a Downs baby. The other thing is, when you go for that 20-week exam to find out the gender of your baby, mm -hmm. that is not what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. what, they're, what the main thing that they're looking for, and they'll tell you at the beginning, is if your child has the characteristics of Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. What she's saying is, look, there are certain 
um, neurological issues or disabilities that you don't find out that don't anything. come up in the amnio. Yeah. And don't come up in your 20 week ultrasound. Yeah. And so if that gets discovered in the third trimester, she's saying we should be able to, to kill the child, which is exactly Francesca Minerva's argument in why should the baby live? Because Minerva says, and she's right, <coughs> because Minerva says, and she's right, that there are certain defects that you only see after the kid is born. Yep. And so, which, if they would have been caught in utero, would have resulted in an abortion. So why can't we do it right after the child yep. is born? And guys, if, you, it, it, if you're if you hearing this woman say, yeah, water's broken, the, the young lady's dilating, still should be able to kill it. If you really believe that we're just going to stop there, <laughs> I, no got, way. I got a bridge. Give me your social security number. Yep. And your bank account number. I got a bridge to sell you. So so he's saying, yeah, yeah, we don't care about the baby, that's obvious. Mm -hmm. What life-threatening issues to the woman would require us to kill a child at nine months? Listen to what she says. What, what conditions are there that can't be resolved by delivering the, the child rather than uh, undergoing an abortion? Again, I am not a physician. <clears throat> um, what... I can point to a case that happened in Ireland. That's the first one that comes to my mind um, that I'm happy to find for you and um, send you the article about. Um, I can definitely send you that article. And if you'll give me some time, I can um, ask our physicians to provide you with a list of maladies that can lead to a woman having to have an abortion at the late stage of pregnancy. I do know that those cases exist. But you don't know what they are. Like I said, not a physician. I do not do not have those specifics about the woman. I have some specifics about the fetus. I do not have the specifics okay. about the woman. All right. Mm. Wow. And it just so happens that none of the uh, none of the physicians were there. Yeah. <sighs> of course, there have been a bunch of physicians that have come out and said there is no reason to kill a child at nine months to save the life of the mother. None. Uh, we had a very, very good friend who had a terrible, terrible delivery and her life was in danger. So what they did was they did a C-section. Right. They didn't say, your life is in trouble. Let's, let's kill this child. Right. You just do a C-section. You take the baby out and life goes on. Guys, come on, look, enough. Look, if you believe that children are not valuable and babies aren't valuable, we've been saying it from the beginning, right? Okay, go with it. Just say that you're okay with doing this for mental health reasons, familial reasons, eco economic reasons, mm -hmm. educational reasons. Um, look, there are a whole host of scenarios you know, people saying things like, you think a woman would randomly wake up and say, I don't want this child? No. But there's a lot of things that happen in nine months. Mm -hmm. Relationship status change in nine months. Mm -hmm. Financial status changes in nine months. Educational status changes in nine months. There are a lot of reasons why a woman could get up and say, yeah, this kid is going to cause me a bunch of mental anguish mm -hmm. and agony. And so we need to get, we, we need to, we need to kill this child. And you'll notice that, that, um, the, the governor kept saying the infant um, because one of the things that these guys are going to have to figure out is what to call what we're killing mm -hmm. because before the term fetus worked pretty well mm -hmm. because people really disassociated fetus from human being yeah <coughs> so now he's struggling with the idea well if it's born people are going to have a hard time calling the born thing a fetus right now look, it's logically ridiculous. Right. So well, if the if the kid is in utero at, at month eight, he's a fetus, open for killing. But if he's at twenty four weeks in the NICU, he's a baby that yeah. we should save. So and so now they got to they're going to have to come up with a different term to describe what you're doing outside mm -hmm. of the womb. Yeah. Can we agree that? At nine months, at least, it's you're killing a baby. Eight months. 
it's so dishonest too because she's talking about it and she's saying, I do know that these cases exist. Like, so we're gonna write an entire bill off of just some like fringe cases that are out there. Well, like it's it's not honest. Here's the thing. It's not I, about those. I can cases. dig up Dovey's V Bolton. I'm just some punk kid. Right. You trying to tell me that there are cases where a woman had to kill her child at nine months, otherwise she was gonna die, and you think that this lady, knowing that this is gonna be televised, knowing that she's going before this board, you, you, you she just forgot him. Mm-hmm. And then the other physicians can't get to can't yeah. couldn't they're yeah. just totally tied up at work. Every last one of them. Come on, y'all. The this industry thrives on lies and ignorance. Mm. And the entire purpose of this video is just to, to, to shed light on what is actually happening. Mm. I mean, it, it should be clear by now that these people want abortion on, on demand for any reason at mm-hmm. any time. Yeah. I mean, that that's obvious. That's and, certainly what it looks like. And, and look, so all these people who are who are saying, life of the mother, life of the mother, like, they're being... They're, they're, they're running a propaganda show mm-hmm. because that's what they want to believe. Yep. But here's the actual website for these people. <laughs> the website is actually rhavote.com, right? Mm-hmm. And they go, we did it! Right? Mm-hmm. And uh, they talk about Andrew Cuomo. There's all the, there's all the women smiling. Um, and then, um, but look at, look. Look at the what's next tab. Oh gosh, what is it? So here it is, what's next? So we did it. No limits. So here, here's, she says, there's more to do to ensure New Yorkers can access care and that no patient is left behind. Number one, no limits. There should be no gestational limits restricting access to abortion care. Wow. Bullet two. <coughs> Bullet two, no reasons. Why a person seeks an abortion at any point is none of our business and should not be the basis of a restriction. So what they're saying is, even the mental health stuff yeah, and, and the, the that's local, not enough. The, the not enough. You should just be able to stroll in there, full belly, demand an abortion, and they should give it to you. That is what they're asking wow. for. So yeah. they know that the the health. Thing is going to pretty much get them. All they have to do is find a, co- a cooperative mm-hmm. uh, physician, but that's not enough. No limits, no reasons. They shouldn't give any reason. Which, of course, if it's the woman's body, that's the entire argument the entire time. Mm-hmm. Who are you to tell a woman what to do with right. her body? So right. then, why would she have to give a reason? Right. No prosecutions. We must ensure no person is prosecuted for the outcome of their pregnancy. No parents! Minors need access to abortion care without parental consent. No personhood! Fetal personhood laws separate pregnant people from their rights and their autonomy. Now, I never argue on the basis of personhood. Mm -hmm. I argue on the basis of species and ontology. I always say that we shouldn't kill other homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. And what she's saying is, hey, you can't give this kid personhood at all, even up to the ninth month. Not a person. Which is exactly Francesca Minerva's argument. Yep. Which is why, if you say that in utero a nine-month-old is not a person then there's no way for you to say ex utero that a nine month old would be a person. Right. And God forbid it's a six month old. uh, Six month old. All right. So uh, this is, this is their end game. Yeah. So when we say people could just stroll up in there and get get an abortion anytime they want, it's basically true so long as they can find a cooperative Mm -hmm. physician <clears throat> but these people are saying we don't even want to wait for that. <coughs> <clears throat> um, here's a, here's another thing that's really interesting that a lot of um, a lot of people do not know about. 
This is from um, Catherine Young, New York State Senator. And she is um, creating this hashtag campaign called hashtag let justice live on. Pregnant domestic abuse victim who lost baby in brutal New York City attack stands with Senate GOP and unveils legislation to protect pregnant domestic violent vic victims. Well, what what's going on there? Well, here's what happened. This is according to the Buffalo News. Um... Senate Republicans, though, warned that the new measure will have dangerous consequences. They said that the legislation repeals criminal code language regarding illegal abortions. They brought a woman to the Capitol from the Bronx who was attacked last year by her then-boyfriend. The multiple stabbing killed the 26-week-old fetus she was carrying, and the man was charged with committing an illegal abortion. Well, this code decriminalizes it. Mm -hmm. So now this woman who had basically had her child stabbed to death based on this code, he gets off because he was charged with an illegal abortion. Jeez. Because it was 26 weeks old. Now, I believe that there's probably going to be some way to uh, amend this. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I thought that this bill was... I thought we were pro-woman. I thought mm -hmm. we were all feminists. Yeah. There's no justice for this lady. Um, Gosh, that's awful. Well, I mean, here we are. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, th this is where we are now as a country. We have people who, for mental health reasons, can now go down in New York City and request to have their child mm -hmm. that's nine months, that the water's broken. I mean, it's very possible that a water could break and instead of the saying, honey, it's happening, driving to the hospital and having the child, it's very possible she could detour and go to the abortion clinic Ugh. and have the child killed. Oh my gosh. If she can demonstrate that she will be under mental or economic or familial duress Ugh. or have to deal with the stigma of being an unwed mother or whatever mm -hmm. happened in the, in the Doe v. Bolton Supreme Court decision. All right. Well, here we are. Um, again, I would encourage you to read Francesca Minerva's article, Post-Birth Abortion, Why Should the Baby Live? Mm -hmm. Go watch the first Planned Parenthood video we shot and listen to what I said in that video and then compare it to what you just heard right. from right. an attorney, um, a delegate, and a governor. Mm -hmm. These are not... Yeah. These aren't... These, these are people who know exactly what they're doing. And for some reason, we're not able to get physicians here. Right. You know what I think? I think, I think these guys overplayed their hand. I hope so. <clears throat> I think it's absolutely horrific what, what, what we're green lighting in this country. Mm -hmm. But I think they went too far. Mm -hmm. And I think people are going to start saying, wait a second here. And I think people are going to have to come face to face with the reality of when we say we are pro-choice, you got to take that all away. Mm -hmm. And we've been saying it over and over again. People have been saying it's a clump of cells, it's a parasite, etc. And now the day is upon us. Yep. Well, there you are. Love your neighbor. Take care of each other. Well, here we are. Love your neighbor. Take care of each other. Middle America. We are the media. Till next time, guys.